I was born September 9, 1837. I am a Wyandotte Indian and the sole surviving full-blooded member of that tribe. Our tribe were of a religious nature and had their worship trees, under the branches of which they worshiped God, whom they called the Great I Am. I attribute my long life to living close to nature and observe the custom of my tribe in sleeping out of doors in the summer and one night of each month throughout the winter with only one blanket for cover. On my next birthday, I will be 100 years old. We were really blessed in our sixth grade class to have a, a new young teacher. And his name was Merrill Stevens, or better known as Cookie in the community, who had really innovative ideas. 1953, a growing community is pushing the boundaries of the city. But some Clintonville school kids learn they aren't the first to live here. The Dominion Land Company was developing this area between Glenmont and Euronia, putting a road through, and in that they found this Adena Indian Mound. The site originally consisted of an embankment wall that was around 2.9 acres, and originally two mounds. When OHS got on site, there was a lot of bulldozing going on at the time, and it was a salvage archaeology project to come in and try to get as much information before it was just completely gone. Here's the blueprint of the site before it was developed, showing the embankment and the two mounds. And under one of the mounds were these post-mold patterns that were found. These are small pits where a wooden post or a part of a tree would have been put in. And it may have held a structure or a fence. There was a burial that was found, and it was of a six to eight-year-old child. The thinking is that that would have been a structure that was used as a mortuary complex. And when they were finished using the structure, they tore it down or burned it down and then memorialized it by building a mound over top of it. People actually used the pits to put things into them and bury them down there. The assemblage consisted of about 90% pottery. So there's a thought that these deposits were left over from the funerary gathering. These were large barrel-shaped vessels that probably held uh, upwards of five gallons. We would traipse across the ravine and up about every day to go watch the excavating of this mound. People have been here over 10,000 years. The area had the rivers, the floodplains, a very rich environment with lots of different plants and animals to eat. For thousands of years, the Adena, Hopewell people, and Native Americans had been living in what we today call Clintonville. Bill Moose would be one of the last and one of the most beloved. Bill was born in Upper Sandusky. The Wyandots were removed from Ohio to Kansas in 1847. Bill Moose and his parents, along with 50 other Indians that refused to leave. No one knows exactly where all the families went, but Bill Moose's family came to Columbus in an area now known as High Banks Metro Park. Bill Moose joined the Sells Brothers Circus in the late 70s and traveled all over the world, including to Australia. The Bill Moose story hit its peak when Bill Moose moved to Clintonville. He collected berries, he hunted, he trapped, but he also, in full Indian regalia, ate at the Wyandotte Country Club. The year was 1915 is when he built this little shelter. The sign on there said, Home of Indian Bill Moose, Survivor of the Wyandotte Indians. He told his story to Leonard Ensley, a reporter who was fascinated that Moose was still living in the tradition of his ancestors. And Leonard was so engrossed with this story, he said, Bill, if I could make a postal card for you and you could sell this for a quarter, he said, that could be a living. So he made a postal card. On one side of the card, Bill standing in front of his cabin, proud. And on the back side was what he told Leonard Ensley, which was an autobiography. Everybody was so nice to him. My mother baked many pies and took them up to him. Bill loved kids, and the kids came in groves to hear his story. My father had a horse here, a pony, and a lot of other kids in the neighborhood had horses too. And they called themselves the Clintonville Pony Club. And the kids apparently would just take off on their ponies and ride all through Clintonville. And the most special thing he talked about was going to visit um, a Native American man. Later on, when my father grew up, he became interested in photography. 
And one of the photographs he took was this picture of Bill Moose. And he called it Vanishing American by John Kessler, my dad. When Bill Moose died in 1937, 20,000 people attended the funeral. His epitaph reads, Bill Moose, last of the Wyandots, born 1837, and whose death in 1937 marks the passing of the Indians from this territory. Thank <laughs> you.